it's no surprise that the term black box has become synonymous with tragic airliner crashes. We hear it nearly every time a plane falls from the sky. Immediately, the search is on for the black box, and once they're found, it's a waiting game until their contents are reviewed and shared with the public. But how exactly does it work, and what even are black boxes? Every airliner is required to have two black boxes on board, each serving its own purpose, although some today are capable of dual function. Nevertheless, the two types of black boxes are referred to as the FDR and the CVR, or the Flight Data Recorder and the Cockpit Voice Recorder. First, let's take a look at the FDR. The Flight Data Recorder is required by the FAA to record a minimum of 88 parameters, including altitude, flight path, speed, engine temperature, and so on. But the most modern black boxes can record anything from hundreds to around 1,000 different parameters. All of this can be done for at least the prior 25 hours, ensuring that in the case of a crash, there is a wide open window for determining any technical contributions to the accident. And all of this information can allow investigators to utilize a computer-generated animation displaying the aircraft's movement and changes all the way up to the crash itself. These then work in correlation with the CVR. The cockpit voice recorder is often able to give investigators a picture of what actually occurred before the FDR is even evaluated. This is because the CVR not only records the pilot's communications on the intercom, but it also tracks all communication by radio between air traffic controllers and the pilots. And also it captures any ambient noise or warning alarms that the pilots themselves would have also heard. These recordings begin once the plane's engines have been started, and they don't stop until a short while after the last engine is powered down, although they can actually be turned off manually if you wanted to. Pilots furthermore have the option to actually erase the contents of the voice recorder, although this feature isn't often utilized. Instead, in the case of a crash, investigators generally have the last two hours of cockpit conversation and sound to evaluate. So, now that we know the purposes of black boxes and what they do, how do they survive the crashes? Well, how, how does the actual structure of a black box work? Well, for one, in terms of structure, black boxes aren't actually black. It would evidently be quite idiotic if it was, as these are the most crucial pieces of an aircraft that need to be found after an accident. <laughs> Meaning that they need to stand out against any surrounding. Thus, black boxes are actually bright orange. This orange coloring is atop a case of either stainless steel or titanium over insulation. It's meant to survive an insane beating and burning that could come from high-speed impact, an inferno, and extended periods under significant water pressure. To ensure that this is the case, black boxes go through extreme and rigorous testing procedures. For one portion, the boxes are launched at a concrete wall at 750 kilometers, or over 450 miles per hour. They're also tested to withstand loads of up to 2.25 tons! or that's nearly 5,000 pounds for a span of at least five minutes. And when it comes to fire resistance, both recorders can resist 1,100 degrees Celsius. That's over 200,000, sorry, 2,000 Fahrenheit for up to an hour. And in the case of underwater crash sites, they are guaranteed to handle water pressure for thousands of feet, additionally tolerating the corrosive effects of salt water and aviation fluid. Furthermore, regarding an airliner crashing into the ocean, black boxes do more than just withstand the hostile environment. In fact, both recorders have actually been equipped with something known as ULB, or an underwater locator beacon. This device can be seen on the front of the box, and it almost looks like a, a handle from a distance. It's a lot more useful than a handle, though. The ULB is tasked with projecting an ultrasonic ping every second for a minimum of 30 days if submerged underwater, up to 20,000 feet, or that's nearly 7 kilometers deep. This can be an incredibly crucial aid in recovering black boxes that are settled on the ocean floor in a crash. Although calls have been made to widen the parameters that the pings can reach, as for now it's really not that big for how big the ocean is. Still, it's remarkable what devices can do and withstand. It, mostly due to their construction and engineering. But the placement of black boxes on each aircraft also assists in its ability to endure even the nastiest of crashes. Have you ever noticed that many times if any part of the aircraft survives a collision, it's usually the tail? Yeah, you're not the only one who has. That's precisely why the black boxes are positioned on the tail end of every airliner. Due to the structure of the plane, the back end tends to be the most sturdy, similar to the neck of a bottle as opposed to the rest of it. And while black box selves are meant to survive quite an impact and thrashing, having them positioned near the end of the tail of each plane surely helps reduce the risk of any detrimental damage to the highly protected memory boards. It also goes without saying that generally pilots don't go back uh, into their planes into mountainsides at top speeds, so a crash on the tail end just doesn't usually happen. 
thus not putting the black boxes at the place of impact. But now that we understand how the black boxes work inside the plane, let's take a look at how they're utilized after an airliner crashes. Let's just use a specific example. The downing of Air France Flight 447 in the summer of 2009. The monstrous Airbus A330-203 has been nicknamed the Titanic of airplanes. It seemed impossible for a craft to ever fall from the sky like this one did. The initial reports on the disappearances and the assumed crash of the plane speculated that there were, may have been a bomb denoted on board, even citing bomb threats on an Air France flight days earlier. Some, on the other hand, they speculated that the extreme weather could have been the culprit here, although this theory seemed more far-fetched given the prestige of the particular Airbus in use. Others, of course, pointed the finger at the pilots. But no one really knew what happened until two years later, when the still-functioning black boxes were recovered from the ocean floor. What the recorders revealed was heart-wrenching. Data from the FDR showed that at some point, while flying through a heavy storm, one or more of the craft's pit tubes was compromised likely by ice crystals, causing inaccurate airspeed readings, and switching off autopilot. At this point, the least experienced of the three pilots was in control of the plane, and tragically seemed to make every wrong decision possible. The CVR reveals that both co-pilots were confused as to what was happening, and thus reacted horribly wrong, particularly as the pilot in control was inexplicably pulling back on the side stick rather aggressively and consistently. All he had to do was maintain the status of the plane that autopilot had kept it in, and yet, it was almost as if he'd panicked and made a wrong choice. His co-pilot couldn't see what was happening with his side stick in the dark of night, and despite the need, the speed indicators having repaired themselves after only a few moments, neither pilot now believed that they were receiving accurate readings. This caused the chaos to escalate, all of which can be heard in the CVR as the men sound absolutely perplexed while the aircraft begins to stall. The sound of the stall warning is furthermore recorded, yet neither pilot seems to grasp what's actually happening here. Instead, they believe that they're moving too fast, and the pilot in control continues pulling back on the stick. The CVR subsequently continues to record as the pilot captain finally joins the other pilots, being the first to recognize what's going wrong here. But by the time he does, it's too late. With minutes left to live, the three men eventually realize what's happened. And with what's about to happen, they say, Damn it, we're gonna crash. This can't be happening. One of the pilots can be heard saying as the lesser experienced of the trio begins to, again, pull back on the side stick despite his more seasoned colleagues having finally told him not to do it. But what's happening? He asks in response. 10 degrees of pitch, the captain states. A second and a half before the CVR stops recording for its final time. In the case of Flight 447, black boxes were able to give us a tragic yet important insight into what caused the massive Airbus to plummet into the ocean in the shocking catastrophe. And with this information, we can understand what went wrong and how we can ensure that it doesn't happen again. And with the, without the CVR and FDR for two years, it wasn't possible to prove any of this or to understand the intricate details of those final moments. It would be one thing to only see the FDR data and to try and speculate based on that, but it's another thing entirely to hear the CVR and to understand what the pilots were thinking, and what they were aware of, and what they were unaware of, and vice versa. Both boxes work in tandem to give us an insane amount of clarity about full-blown crashes or even close calls that could also serve as a learning experience for the aviation community. All in all, black boxes work miraculously by recording vital information, protecting the information it's stored through fantastic engineering and construction, and then assisting investigators in finding these recorders by sending out ultrasonic pings and simply being orange and bright, easy to spot amongst the wreckage. Following this recovery of the boxes, the device's information provides, in extraordinary detail, a clear picture of how the accident happened, giving closure to the families, or in cases such as the two back-to-back -back Boeing 737 MAX crashes, revealing a startling safety issue within a certain aircraft. With these discoveries surely saving hundreds of lives, while there are many suggestions for black box to become even more efficient and able to share information in real time, say, in the event of a crash it can't be recovered, we'd still have the information. But it seems that, for now, the black box works ex exceptionally well as it is.